Hi guys, happy new years. I hope you've enjoyed your holidays. So in this video, I want to show a few new photos that I caught in the holidays. And I want to show or discuss when it is preferable to use aperture priority over manual and when manual can be preferable to aperture priority. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, up here on top of your camera, you have the different shooting modes. And for the most part in landscape photography, we use either aperture priority or fully manual. I don't want to go through all these different shooting modes, but if you are in doubt about what ISO, shutter speed and aperture is, be sure to check out my video 90% of landscape photography in 20 minutes. Here I cover those. But let's start in the field. What a beautiful and calm and atmospheric morning it is. So I'm at a location I was out scouting a couple of days ago. I showed it in my stories on Instagram. If you don't follow me on Instagram, be sure to check it out there. And this morning, fog has come and it's just its very beautiful. So I'm just out here in the morning taking a few photos, playing around with the reflections around the lake, simply just picking out different details. Right now I'm working on this overall picturesque shot where I'm including this foreground island with the reflection of the tree and then the background island. And then we have trees here on this side and trees on this side here that both vanish out into the background. So a very beautiful, calm, serene scene. So this video here is all about which camera mode is the most optimal to use in landscape photography. I have talked a little bit about it on my channel and if you have followed me for a long time you know that I'm almost always photographing in aperture priority and that's the same this morning because it's just so calm, there's nothing in the scene that changes. I can simply just go to aperture priority, put in the desired aperture take the ISO down to ISO 100, ISO 50 even, if I want to do that. And then the shutter speed is whatever it is. How I control the shutter speed is by changing my exposure compensation wheel. That is very easy on my camera. Of course, it can be a little bit different on other cameras. So in this example, you can see I am photographing at F9, ISO 100, and my shutter speed is one third of a second. And you can see my exposure compensation is at one stop and one third, just like the wheel up here. The reason for this is that this is a relatively flat scene because of all the fog. And because of that, the camera will automatically try to expose for neutral exposure, which is 50% gray. So in a photo like this, in an environment like this, it can be snow, it can be fog, but an environment with a lot of brightness in the scene, a lot of what is supposed to be white, then you will have to exposure compensate with about a stop or maybe a little bit more. Now I control and check most of my shots by using separate stripes. You can see the blinkies here. I have my separate stripes set at the setting called 100 and when it is at 100 I know that as long as I have the stripes I'm good but if you can see here if I start to overexpose it even more whenever they turn white on the other side then I know I'm overexposing. 
It's simply just a question about understanding the signals and settings of your camera. So as long as I have the stripes, I'm good as long as I have the setting on 100. In this way, I know I'm getting an optimal exposure where I am not overexposing the highlights. Yet, most of my histogram will be on the right side because that is where most of my highlights are. And I haven't clipped my highlights, so I can always bring it back down and have all the information in one exposure. So right now I am just picking out details on the other side of the lake and I'm simply just zooming in to this area here and if I go over here, this area here and just getting some very simple and calm shots. And again, completely the same aperture priority right now I'm just at f9 because why not uh, and, and, and that's it. I simply just shoot. I have the blinkies, the zebra stripes, to make sure that I'm not over or under exposing. And that's it, super simple. I have absolutely nothing against shooting in manual. And there's a lot of reasons why you should shoot in manual. I will talk about that later in this video. But in a perfectly calm situation and in like, I would say almost like 90% of my landscape photography, I can get away with aperture priority. It is just so, so easy to use. Because remember, whether or not you're shooting aperture priority or manual, it is the light meter in your camera that tells you how much light there is in the scene. And then you just adjust the settings to that. It's not like you control the settings. You can control the settings, but you still want the optimal exposure. And the optimal exposure is, of course, dependent on the light in the scene. So in that way, you don't really have any kind of like, you know, free will in that regard, if you do desire to get an optimal exposure. So another huge benefit of photographing an aperture priority is that when you change your scene, you don't have to constantly compensate with your shutter speed for the changing luminosity of your scene. So in this case here, as you can see here, I am shooting towards these silver birches over here. And when I just turn on the camera, it simply just finds the correct exposure itself because I have the same exposure compensation, the same ISO, the same aperture, and then it has found that one second is the correct shutter speed to get the optimal exposure. Even though most of the scene is technically dark, as you can see here, because I'm shooting into the forest, I will still need to exposure compensate, to shoot to the right, to get the cleanest photo. But that's another discussion. Nick Page actually just released a video about this that, yeah, check it out. It's pretty good. But again, this is just so easy shooting an aperture priority because I just turn on the camera and it has already found the correct exposure. I don't really need to go in and compensate with the shutter speed myself given that I was shooting in manual.
So another big benefit of shooting an aperture priority is that it is easier to adapt to the scene. Let's say some birds are flying into my scene and I want to catch them too. If I were shooting in manual mode, I would have to change my shutter speed to catch the birds with a fast shutter speed so they didn't get blurry. If I'm bringing up my shutter speed, I would also have to bring up the ISO. So I would have a high ISO, fast shutter speed, and the aperture is whatever it is to get the entire scene in focus. Now, when I'm in aperture priority, I simply just have to change the ISO because the camera automatically compensates with the shutter speed. So in that way, there's only one setting I have to change. So it is just much faster to adapt to the scene when I'm shooting in aperture priority relative to if I were shooting in manual mode. And you may of course ask, yeah, mess, but how often does that happen? Not very often, but it is annoying to miss out on one of your favorite shots of the year if you don't shoot in aperture priority, because in this example right here, that is exactly what happened. If I had had to compensate with both the shutter speed and the ISO in this photograph here, then I wouldn't have been prepared for whenever these geese flew into the scene. If you want to learn about composition landscape photography, be sure to check out and get my two eBooks. Here I cover all the different tools I use and how I think in the field when I compose my photos. And both books ends with a chapter where I bring everything together. If you're in doubt about whether you want them or not, there are two free light versions available also down in the description. You have to sign up to my newsletter to get the first one. So the point for me generally is to make the technical aspects of photography as easy as possible. So I clear up brain capacity to be more creative. So another place where I also use aperture priority is when I take my epic selfies, where I walk far into the scene. So I put the camera in aperture priority and use the intervalometer, and then the camera just keeps taking photos. The reason why I prefer to use aperture priority in a setting like that is because if a cloud moves in front of the sun or it moves away from the sun, then of course the entire scene will completely change in regard to the brightness values. So I might end up under exposing or over exposing the photo if I'm not in aperture priority. So when do I prefer to use manual? Usually during night I always shoot in manual. For some reason I just find it easier that it is just the shutter speed that I change. But shooting in manual also allows me to go into bulb mode where I can make exposures longer than 30 seconds. So night photography, Milky Way photography, Northern Lights photography. However, my most common use for shooting in manual is around water. And it's for two reasons. One is that I lock down the shutter speed. So the shutter speed will always be the same. Usually around water when I photograph waves, whether they are coming towards me or they are receding, I'm shooting in continuous shooting mode. So when I expose for the scene and I expose for the waves, then I get a certain look at like, let's say 0.5 seconds. And that's what I'm shooting for. When the waves break or when they recede, the brightness values of the scene usually change quite a lot. So if I were shooting in aperture priority, the shutter speed would change and that would change the look of the waves. And I'm of course not interested in that. So in that way, I can control my shutter speed. When I shoot waves and I want a specific look at those waves, I photograph in manual. So probably one of the most dramatic examples for this is when you're shooting at the Diamond Beach in Iceland. Because of all the black sand, the camera will of course expose for something very dark. But when waves come in and they break, then it will of course be very bright. Like the contrast between the black sand and the foam of the breaking waves will be very, very big. So there's a huge risk of you overexposing the first 
few photos if you're photographing in manual mode and you're of course not interested in that. So to get around this you want to photograph in manual. So the other reason why I prefer to photograph in manual mode around water is that there's always a risk that you get some spray up on the front element of your lens. And you obviously want to avoid that. The way I avoid this is again to photograph in manual mode and continuous mode. So in this example here, I was standing very close to the waterfall and spray were continuously hitting the camera. So what I did is, of course, I put in the settings in manual mode and then I just hold up my cloth in front of the lens. And then I started photographing and then I removed the cloth. So the first shot or the first two shots were without spray. Now if I were shooting an aperture priority, then the camera would have exposed for the dark scene that I would have created when I put the cloth in front of the camera. So when I remove the cloth, then the camera have to start exposing for the waterfall scene. But if I were shooting there, I would just overexpose the first few photos. So in that way, it is very preferable to photograph in manual mode when you're photographing around water. So to summarize, think of your camera as a Swiss army knife. It has different modes for a reason, and it's about making it as easy for yourself as possible. At least that's how I go about it. And aperture priority is what I prefer to photograph in when I'm just hanging around, like let's say in a forest, and the scene does not change while I'm photographing it. However, manual is really good for when the scene is changing around you, and water scenes is the most obvious example for that. So there are no right or wrong photography mode. There are just modes that are more optimal in different conditions. So if you want to learn how I edit my photos, be sure to enroll in my huge Photoshop for landscape photographers post-processing course. Here I share everything I know and I'm bringing you from a beginner to an advanced user of Photoshop. Besides, of course, showing you how the programs work, I also show you how to create glow and atmosphere, I show you how to clean your photos, I show you how to focus stack and blend photos, I show you how to create luminosity masks and both blend photos and use luminosity masking in your post-processing in general. So there's a lot more in this course besides only that, and you can of course read all about it before you enroll in the course. If you enjoyed this video or in any way, shape or form found it entertaining or beneficial for you, I would highly appreciate both a like and a comment. Engaging with my videos is the best way to support my channel because then the YouTube algorithm that we are all slaves to will know that this is an interesting video. Thank you so much for watching.